One of the amazing things about Linux is if you have an AMD GPU, the drivers that come directly from AMD, at least minus the Pro drivers, are actually open source and developed in an open source friendly way with a public GitLab instance. Any user can go and read and modify the code in any way they want. And if a patch is made that you don't agree with, if you know how to use Git and a little bit about the project, you can just go and revert the patch, compile the code, and then run that on your system. But the same can't be said about your GPU firmware. It doesn't matter if you're on Team Green or Team Red, the firmware is going to be proprietary. But what if it wasn't like that? What if the firmware was also open source? Now, that would be awesome, and that's not exactly happening. But what if we were moving a step in the right direction and certain parts of the firmware were being open sourced, or at least being considered? Well, there is some hope of that actually happening. All of this stems from a set of tweets around the middle of 2023 about Rockham. So Rockham is to AMD what CUDA is to NVIDIA. The difference is you notice that AMD is not in the top 10 most valuable companies. A big part of the reason here is AMD is completely dropping the ball when it comes to compute. They are letting NVIDIA completely dominate the market, and they are not even trying. It's only very recently they actually got usable documentation that lists out the GPUs that are actually supported. Even then, the range of GPUs supported by Rockham is minuscule. It is, like, five or ten different GPUs compared to CUDA, where basically every single GPU released since CUDA became a thing supports CUDA and is very clearly documented which version of CUDA is supported. This wasn't a big deal until a year or so ago, when, you know, there's been this rise in AI, neural networks, and all these other different compute tasks where AMD is just losing ground. NVIDIA at this point is not a GPU company. They're an AI company, and that's why they're so valuable. Back in the middle of 2023, there was a short conversation between George Hotz of Tiny Corp and Lisa Su, the CEO of AMD. Now, George's company is building a product called the Tiny Box, a $15,000 HPC or AI focused system with AMD Epic CPUs and hopefully AMD GPUs. Alongside this, they're building a neural network framework called TinyGrad. Now, back then, George had a bit of a falling out with AMD over issues with Rockham and AMD seemingly just not really caring about the platform. After all this went down, he said, also, the Tiny Corp is back on the Get AMD on ML Perf plan. Spoke with Lisa Sue. I do believe things will get better and AMD will begin to develop in public. Help out by doing bounties, $1,000 for finishing up the RDNA 3 assembler, and pre order their tiny box. I had to show an archive because for some reason he deleted that original post, but Lisa said, Thanks for connecting, George Hotz. Appreciate the work you and Tiny Corp are doing. We are committed to working with the community and improving our support. More to come on Rock'em soon. Lot to work ahead, but excited about what we can do together. That's it for the background. The real story starts just a few days ago. Second training run crashed with the same MES error. Beta driver piece didn't work and found what I'm 95% sure is a compiler bug. As it stands, I'm not okay with shipping the 7900 XTX platform, what should we do? MES is a part of the firmware called the Micro Engine Scheduler. We are not AMD's QA team and we have no relationship with them. I saw some stuff last year that gave me hope, but this platform has been out for 14 months now and there's still some serious issues. It upsets me that MES isn't open source. While more stuff is open than NVIDIA, if there's blobs, we do not own the hardware. I'm sure a lot of you guys completely agree with that. And I don't feel great about investing time into this. The compiler bug today is icing on the cake. At first, I thought it was the launch bounds feature, but it looks like it can be triggered without that. Not being able to trust a compiler, 
undermine so much trust in the entire platform. It would set us back, but maybe we should switch to 3090s or Intel GPUs. Either way, we aren't shipping the tiny box or ordering bulk 7900 XTX until this is figured out. I'm sure AMD doesn't want these bugs either, but they are focused in the wrong place. They should immediately stop development of high-end machine learning libraries and fix their basic shit. Their compiler and driver have bugs. Why should anyone spend a minute building anything on top until that stuff is addressed? Which, whilst not being part of this situation, does kind of remind me of certain Linux desktop projects. I'll let you fill in the gaps with whichever one you think I'm talking about. So considering they couldn't do much else, if AMD open sources their firmware, I'll fix their LLVM spilling bug and write a fuzzer for HSA. Otherwise, it's not worth putting tons of effort into fixing bugs on a platform you don't own. And that actually got a reply from Lisa Sue. Thanks for the collaboration and feedback. We are all in to get you a good solution. Team is on it. So as you do, TinyCorp made a poll. Have a call with AMD tomorrow, will they open source the MES? Which, to my surprise, ended up being a fairly split poll, with the majority of people saying no. But even so, I am genuinely surprised that this many people have hope in it happening. Maybe it's just because I've seen so many things go badly that I would expect this no to be way, way higher, something like 70 or 80%. But maybe it's because there are a lot of people in this space that know what AMD is like on Linux, where they have these open source drivers that anybody can go and modify and anybody can go and read, that maybe that is why there are so many people that actually have hope here. I don't have hope, but you know, it's nice there's at least this many. And TinyCorp commented after the call as well. Call went pretty well. We are gating the commitment to the 67900 XTX on a public release of a roadmap to get the firmware open source. And obviously, the MLPerf training bug being fixed. We aren't open source purists. It doesn't matter to us if the HDCP stuff is open, for example. But we need the scheduler and memory hierarchy management to be open. This is what it takes to push the performance of neural networks. We also advise the build process for AMD GPU DKMS should be more open. While the driver itself is open, we haven't found it easy to rebuild and install. Easy REPL cycle is a key driver for community open source. We want the firmware to be easy to build and install also. Should have a go or no go decision by the end of next week. Confidence, 70%. Then as of about three hours ago as a recording, I hope we have this impact. Still on track for MES open sourcing roadmap by the end of the week. I was afraid you were going to say end of the year. Thank God. That's the roadmap, not the source. We'll see by the end of the week what the timeline is on that. It takes a while to do things in big companies. There has never been a truer truth than that. Someone also asked, will open sourcing MES actually help? Won't it be useless without additional hardware info? This feels like redux of experience with ISA doc and no registered docs. We discussed hardware docs as well, one step at a time. They definitely have an MES they can open source. That's an easier ask than for docs and header files aren't the worst docs. Again, it's not a matter of everything is open or nothing is open. You can open different parts along the way and work your way towards a better open state. And hopefully this roadmap does come out and actually does look pretty good. Personally, I would like to see everything be opened, even if it's not being developed in an open source way. At least a source dump for every new version made and allow people to submit patches if there are problems. Honestly, there are only two reasons why I can see them not wanting to open source the firmware. Firstly, patents. There are likely different things they're not actually allowed to open source Possibly there are issues with HDCP, possibly there are issues with various other parts, and the other issue is contractual agreements, because 
maybe not everything is developed in-house. They've dealt with different partners, they use different libraries, and they can't open source this library, or this contractor doesn't want this to be open sourced, and there's just all of this, like, legal mess, this legal spaghetti that somehow has to be unraveled, and when you're a company the size of AMD, that's gonna take a while to do, even if they wanted to do so. Honestly, I really hope we see this roadmap. Whilst it is just a small part of the firmware, and it's not the entirety being open sourced, it's a step in the right direction. And when you have one part being open source, maybe that gives you a reason to open source another part and then another part. Once the gate is open, doing the rest of it is going to be considerably easier. But there's always going to be challenges along the way, as we saw recently with the whole HDMI 2.1 situation. But what do you think? Do you think this is a good step in the right direction? Do you think there is no reason to open source the firmware? Or do you think it should all be open sourced at the exact same time? I would love to know. Also, do you think it's actually going to happen? Do you think AMD is actually going to release a roadmap towards open sourcing a part of the firmware. I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, Silly Barrow Pay, link in the description down below. That's gonna be it for me and all of this should be a bit more open.